meeting. Um, I think Meshak, can you control control it from your end too? Yes, yes. So that we are, so that we can have a smooth running. I'm yet I'm yet to be able to control it from here. Okay. Um, hello, Simeon. Please, can you make uh, Meshak a course too? I think we are live on YouTube now. We are live on YouTube, so. If I need to switch off my video, let me know as well, if it helps. Uh, no, 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 we need, to, we need to have you. We need to have you on. All right. Yeah. Hello, Simeon. Please make Meshak a course. OK, thank you so much once again for those who are just joining us. We are grateful. Thank you for for joining the Nigerian Forestry Student and Graduate Roundtable discussion. And so far, we've had two editions. The first edition was great. We have uh, 56 people in attendance. And uh, the second edition, we were able to reach over 100. And uh, as at this morning, the information we gathered, you know, from, from our database, we, we, we got across to 232 people for this event, 232. I think that's a good uh, start from us. And then we hope to get more people joining us on board and afterwards get across to people uh, with this video, the video uh, recording after this event. Meshak, I think we can, we can kick start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I welcome everybody to uh, the round table. Okay, the purpose of this round table is to ensure that we bring forestry students together all around so that we can have uh, a heart to heart talk to see how we can progress and move forward in the right direction of our lives and become more relevant ultimately and become relevant in the society. Okay, so um, my name is Bisha Kaderele. I am presently. I study environmental management uh, at uh, Nigeria Defense Academy Postgraduate School under the Department of Geography. And my background is in forestry uh, from Fair University of Technology, Akure. Okay. And I have my co host, Adetula Olaolua. He's also a master's student in Futa, where he studies uh, MSc forestry, but his options, the options are diverse. Maybe we we'll he will talk about it himself later. All right. So, uh, Having this uh, program on, we have uh, people who work with us on the ground and would like to acknowledge them. And they are really, they are the great guys that are making this work out, right from designing to concept, to uh, mailing, to reporting and everything. Everything we do on this program, they are well detailed and we have their report of each session. We have the report and we write an article about it and also work on research to help um, the forestry, uh, forestry at large. Okay, so one of them I'm going to be acknowledging is um, Jumoke Ogutimei. Jumoke Ogutimei is, is one of the great guys working with us. Okay, by guys, I mean male and female. And the other person is Adigo Azan, a great guy too, working with us uh, on, this, on this project. Jumoke is, is a staff at Forest Research Institute of Nigeria, and Adigo Azan is a staff at Kaduna State Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. And we have um, Anyele Samuel who is a, uh, an MSc student uh, in, at the University of British Columbia, Canada. So those are the people that we are working together uh, in the team. So thank you very much. I'd like to leave the remaining to Allah Luana. Okay, thank you great again. I am Allah Luana Adetula, and uh, I'm currently a master student at the Federal University of Technology, Accra. And then I studied for Please mute yourself and thank you so much. Uh, okay, like I told you, we've had to editions of this program in the past and then this is the third edition and we are privileged to have with us uh, a great personality you know 
I, I call him a gun. <laughs> but then, yeah, yeah, he's a mentor to so many. And then he graduated from the Federal University of Technology, Accra, you know. And then, uh, you know, uh, in the course of uh, studying in Futa, a number of us, you know, when you get to the, I think, honors row, yeah, I think we have uh, Dr. Yemi's name there. And also at the department, is also a, uh, a great personality. And we've said so much about him. And it's a privilege to have Dr. Yemi Adeyeye with us this uh, afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Yemi, for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, man. Okay, should I should should we just go into the discussion right now? Or? Yeah. Um, okay, we'd like you to, to to talk about yourself, a short intro of yourself. Let's hear from your sis mouth. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thanks so much for having me. It's really it's sort of exhilarating to see a lot of names that I've heard before, have had conversation with some of you before. I've seen some face to face. I can see Adim Jane, Alex, uh, Shane, and uh, I can see Prince Usura as well. I think we had a conversation on Facebook or something at some point. I see Toyo C, Jumake. So I think one way or the other, I have had some kind of conversation with a lot of you before, which is so it's really, really good to see you uh, appear on screen right now. So, um, so what I would try to do is I wouldn't get go too much into speaking about myself because I assume that uh, many of you can easily get to know who I am. So if we are going to optimize this one hour, I think we should uh, focus a little bit more on uh, the interaction between all of us. And you know, I, I would try to answer as many questions as I can. And um, you know. I would like us to, to make use of this time to focus on the the, uh, the core uh, issue while we are here, for, rather than for me to talk a lot about myself. But in any case, my name is Yemi, and I finished from Futa uh, in the year 2010. That's like a decade ago. Wow. Damn. <laughs> and um, it, uh, you know, it, was a, it was a ride. It was nice to be in Futa. I was... Um, then from there, I, I moved uh, to the UK for my master's degree. I mean, I finished in Futa, then I did my uh, uh, NYSC in Akwa Ibom. Then from there, I returned to Futa. I was in Futa for a while for, uh, as, the, as a graduate assistant. You all know the program. And then from there, I left shortly after for the uh, Erasmus Mundus program in uh, Sutro 4. So I did Sutro 4 between 2013 and 2014. I, I was in the UK, Wales, Bangor University. And then I was in Copenhagen as well, the University of Copenhagen. And then between that period of time, I did research in Uganda, I did research in Nepal. And then from there, I moved to FAO. I did a short term work there. And then from FAO, I moved to Canada. I did my PhD there. And then I'm in FAO right now. So where I work uh, as a director for Wi Fi. All right, so that's me in brief. You probably have seen one thing or the other about me. So let's just keep it that way. And um, um, Mayshak, is there anything else that we, we should move into so that we can? Yes, yes. Uh, all right. So, um, thanks for the introduction. So, well, what we'd like to move into is we want to learn from your life. Okay. We are, we are aspiring to become like you. And of course, probably become greater than you, of course, which I know that's what you expect from yeah. someone coming after you. So, we want you to tell us a short story of yourself from the beginning till date, right? From probably when you made your choices in secondary school. Want you to talk about the wrong choices you've made, the right choices you've, uh, choices you've made, probably your regrets and all those things that come together to make the Yemi Adeye that we know today. All right, uh, that's a very good question. I will try as much as possible to be as succinct as possible <laughs> because there's a lot to talk about. And um, but uh, you know, Hello? one of the things that can you all hear me? Yes. We can. We can. All right. So one of the things that make me to get excited anytime I remember, like, you know, I, I sort of uh, I remember the past, is how much things have changed in Futa and how much uh, a lot of difficulties that we had back then has been sort of, uh, are sort of dissipated to a particular extent. Because right now, there are a lot of, uh, I look back, I see a lot of young people doing a lot of great things that before, while I was there, were like things that were like impossible, you know. We were like it was a generation of trying to break some gas, glass ceiling and trying to get some things that had never been done before, and um, so so that's that's just by the way. 
anyway, I what a lot of you might not know is that I had a national diploma. Basically, I was a D candidate in Futa. I was I went to the Federal College of Forestry, Jericho, in Ibadan. So I was a very young boy. I finished uh, my secondary school education, and I was just you know wondering what I'm going to do next. And somehow, somehow, I floundered into you know Jericho and in the, into the College of Forestry. And you know what? What was interesting right back then was I didn't know anything about forestry or what it was all about. It was just one weird program that was written on paper. And I was like, what is this? It was just that weirdness that attracted me to it at the first instance. It was so strange. Wood and paper technology, what is that? You know? So I opted for wood and paper technology, actually. I had a national diploma in wood and paper technology. So it was after then that I went to, uh, to Futa as a direct entry candidate. And you know, as I grew, because I, I entered Futa, I think at age uh, maybe 17, something like that, after my DE, I, I finished my uh, national diploma at 15, 17 or something like that. So when I was in Futa, I was, um, you know, I started growing and I started getting scared of what the future holds. And uh, I know, I'm not sure if it is still a thing in Futa right now that you guys get called at Begilodo. Is this something that it's a thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, you know, around that time, people call us names and it was just, it was this kind of bully that was, uh, you know, I was a bit scared that, okay, if, if, if this perception, the cloud, the choice of career I've, I've made, then I have to do something Hello, about everyone. it. This is Mr. Laurent Yonofin. All right. Nice to meet you, uh, the person that just joined. So, um, so back then, you know, I was, I was scared of the future. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just, but there was one thing that was a commonality with what I understood about success. To be successful in life, it really doesn't matter that much what choice of career or what kind of engagement you are doing more so than how you are doing it. Basically, it doesn't really matter if you're in forestry or if you're in crop science or if you're in fisheries and wildlife or if you're in mechanical engineering or if you're in medicine. It ma what matter more is what kind of energy, what kind of engagement, how well you're doing it. Yeah. So my point is that you could be in forestry and, be, and get to the height of success. And you can be in mechanical engineering or whatever prized uh, uh, um, uh, engagement or career that people gravitate towards and still flounder. So what has to do more is what you can make out of it. So I think I understood that early in life. And I think that's one lesson that I would like to share with everyone that guys, whatever you do, it really wouldn't matter much what that thing exactly is. It will matter a lot more how well you do it. So commit yourself to whatever goal you want to do and do it well. Because I think I learned that lesson early in life that, you know, I got that training for my parents. I got that training for myself. So I, I, I so while there's a lot of loud noise about I big or whatever, they call you a lot of names. I just kept, you know, I kept thinking about how can I make the best out of studying forestry? And um, that was exactly what happened. I mean, I was fortunate. I, as you all know, you have to work hard to get a first class out of Futa, <laughs> and even more so out of forestry around that time, because around that time it was almost something that was impossible. Because um, if you all, maybe some of you don't know, uh, uh, Professor Oke was like the first uh, first class student that forestry Futa had, and after Professor Oke was uh, uh, Adewale, I don't know if some of you know him, uh, Adegoke. Yes, yes. And then after him, it was me. So, uh, so around that time, it was like something that really happens. And it was something that just like seems impossible. It was just very difficult. But it happened, right? And so when some people tell you that, ooh, education help, ooh, first class help, don't say that thing, guys. Don't, don't, don't join those kind of people who say that kind of nonsense. Because uh, education alone does not guarantee success. That's true, but education can make a significant difference in how successful you're going to become. 
So which means, again, just to declare, first class alone does not translate into a plethora of successes, you know, just running around you and you just picking whatever you want. What would do that for you is you being able to adapt that first class to get what you need. Essentially, first class is a very, very good thing that will connect to you or whatever you have, two, one, two, two, whatever you've got, that thing is instrumental into many other things. So reflect a lot on what you acquire in the university. Be mm -hmm. able to convince yourself that you're doing the best that you can, because that matters as well. Because, you know, uh, in everything we do in life, we first articulate it comprehensively to ourselves. You think about, does this thing make sense for me? Does this thing help me? Can I do it? So it's the conviction within yourself that translates into what is real, into what is obtainable. So which means if you cannot convince yourself that you've done the best, you may, not, you may find it difficult to articulate realities and work in reality to actually achieve your goal. So I always encourage people, make sure what you're doing is the best of yourself. Put yourself into it. There's something about doing the best that you can that, 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 that will relate to the outcome that is obtainable. Oh. So think about it, guys. Reflect on what you're doing. Make sure you are always giving your best. Oh. Another thing along the way was that as I was, uh, when I was you know, doing my undergraduate study, I quickly realized that um, you know, education alone or academics alone or grade alone would not, does not suffice. The international community or opportunities in general is a very, very complex setup. It's highly competitive. Things are getting more competitive these days. The competition 10 years ago is, is even different from that, the competition today. So imagine what you would need to outcompete people for a limited amount of resources, because that's what opportunities is. Opportunity is that thing that is obtainable, but you would have to compete with others to get it. Basically, it goes to out compete others who usually get the, the opportunities. So now, what would allow you or what will enable you to out compete others? Maybe the platform of things. It could be the network you have. It could be the kind of grade you have. It could be a combination of network grade and extracurriculum activities. But you remember that you would need some, a lot of people would need to get something, but few will only end up getting it. So what would you need to stay ahead? Work a lot on your network and people you know in your lives. Do extracurriculum, guys. Join student activities. Uh, try out leadership activities. For example, what uh, Meshak and Ola Alua and Jumake and the rest of you are doing in relation to this is very, very useful because you are building a particular kind of competencies that stretch behind the classroom. And all these kinds of things are important. You should be able to articulate things that you do outside of the classroom in the best way possible to get the opportunity you want. Basically, things you do out of classroom are as important as things you do in the classroom. In fact, in some situation, things you do out of classroom will take you further where your grade stops. So I would say, get that grade get the best grades obtainable. You know, do whatever you need to do to get it. And when you're done getting it, remember you need extra curriculum. Try out different things. Join student uh, uh, ranks, you know, join student leadership opportunity, get engaged in competitions in the school, support community-driven activities, community development or whatever. Things that shows that you're not just someone who understands the YBX because the whole world does not revolve around that. So it's the combination of different things that puts you ahead. And um, yes. also what we're doing right now, articulating our thoughts and putting it in front of an audience. It's not something you learn in the classroom. In fact, there's a significant, there is no correlation between academic grade and your ability to communicate. Communication is core in the world of opportunities. In fact, the, the, the beautiful, the more, the more enticing, the more uh, glamorous an opportunity is, the higher the possibility that you need to be able to articulate your thoughts 
in the most comprehensive and coherent way possible. In other words, beautiful opportunities comes with the need to be able to either retain orally, verbally, or whatever. So think about that. What do you need to do to build up your competencies? Try out these opportunities to be a student leader. For those who have communicated with me more personally, you will know that I've often mentioned that, are you a part of IFSA? <laughs> Like, are you a part of IFSA? Are you actively engaged in IFSA or other student body? For those of you who are in agriculture and you're on the, on the Skype call, there are a lot of student bodies that are in agriculture as well. There's IAS. I don't know if some of you have heard of it before. The International Association for Agricultural Students is it's international. And it's like in the same sort of, uh, 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 it operates in the same kind of range like IFSA does. So IFSA is for forestry, IAS is for agricultural students. So reflect on that and try to see if you can join the, this association and expand your network, you know, communicate on different things, learn about how the world works outside of Futa or Futumina or, or uh, Ibada or whatever. And um, so along the, so another thing that uh, I, so well, I finished in Futa, I did a uh, bachelor's, I did, um, a little bit with IFSA, you've seen my profile. So I had my master's. So during my master's, another set of, I learned some new set of things. And that is about language. You know, as a Nigerian, the, you have, you either speak uh, the local languages or you speak English. So now let's talk, let's translate into the global world of opportunities. So in the world of global opportunities, language is one of those things that make a difference. Basically, the, the, the higher the number of language you can speak, I'm talking about international languages, the higher your chances with international opportunities, like international jobs with the United Nations or with international non-government organizations, international NGOs and, and uh, you know, big government institutions or whatever. You know, these kind of institutions that you may find attractive, learning languages also helps your profile. So when I was in the UK, I had the opportunity to learn French, but I didn't really take it that seriously. You know, I didn't. So it's one of those things that I think I may, may fall into the category of regrets in the sense that I didn't take it seriously enough because if I did, I should be able to speak French fluently now. And, and the number, like I said, the number of languages you can speak has a repercussion on you. So guys, reflect on as you go, as you grow. Some of you will start getting opportunities that provide you for the opportunities. For example, you might get you might get a scholarship to go to a new country and then whatever, and then there's a lot of opportunities for you to access, access them, you know. Use this opportunity to the to the to the limit possible, you know, get into it. If there's an opportunity to take free classes in other languages, take it and be strategic in your approach. If you have to choose between say German and French, I would choose French. Why? Because French is more, more is a more international global UN languages that applies in more countries than German. So think about that. So don't go learn Slovenia or learn, uh, if you have two opportunities to learn a language, you, you go ahead to learn a random language in a random country, while you can easily just learn another language. But again, all these things is also connected to what are your objectives, okay? If you have, so since we are talking about opportunities right now, I would say go for a language that gives you better opportunity, that opens the world to you. So even though I eventually learned Spanish and I had to, learn it because I connected that in a way to my PhD program in Canada. I wish I had learned them earlier. I wish I had been more strategic. I wish I had started to learn languages as early as possible when the opportunities started presenting themselves. So don't fall into the same, uh, what's it called? It's the same mistake, set of mistakes I made. I've spoken to a lot of these guys at UBC. I told them, to do French or to study languages is free for you as a graduate student. You've paid your school fees or your scholarship had paid your school fees. So go take those classes, you know? 
pay them, lend them, remember them because you will need them. It might be the only thing that makes a difference in your CV between the competitors. Mm. So everybody that puts you ahead of others, don't joke with them. Mm. And don't trivialize oh. and expect that an opportunity that has provided itself right now is gonna stick around forever. If it wow. sticks around wow. forever, there is not an opportunity. That's one mm. particularity about opportunity. They come around, they stay, stay around for a while, then they move on. So it's left for you to know when they're around you. When an opportunity is around you, you should need to be able to recognize it. If you don't recognize it, it's not going to stick around. Uh, so if you think, oh, I, can't, I don't need to do this thing right now, I can do it tomorrow, sorry. You will not be able to do it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, the best time to do it is now. Because I fell into that. I was thinking, well, maybe I'm going to learn it later. Maybe later, you know, but later never comes. And you're never going to have a better time. Uh, um, maybe I should stop a little bit on that to see if there's maybe some okay. questions. To yeah. All right. We will be taking the questions um, after, after okay. the session, after we're done with the other questions. So the, the third question here is, <clears throat> we need to talk about the, about YPAD. Okay. Talk about YPAD, the opportunities in YPAD, what are the benefits, all right? And how can people take advantage of this benefit, become a member of YPAD and also? All right. So, uh, so YPAD, it's uh, from what the name is, Young Professionals for Agricultural Development. YPAD is a network, like a global network of young people or young people who are doing things, basically not just students, like young professionals under the age of 40 who are engaged in different forms of activities across the agri-food systems. So when I say agri-food systems, I'm referring to uh, from primary production, from farming, all the way to say uh, value addition, marketing, uh, transportation and logistics, um, um, communication, research, and uh, uh, food processing and delivery on the table, packaging, whatever, everything you do that contributes to putting food on the table. So that's mm -hmm. how I explain agri food systems. So YPAD is then the network where every young person that has some kind of contribution or interest in the agri food systems sort of congregate. So now YPAD is sort of a, an online, offline community where, you know, uh, we, 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 we foster a peer-to-peer -peer interaction where people who have this interest can have discussions and communicate and share opportunities and learn from each other and grow together, share challenges and what things are going, uh, imagine innovations and so on. And it also serves as an, an entity whereby for institutions, it sounds like a middle entity whereby the connection can occur between farmers, young agri-food system interested people, young Wapadians, and other entities like big organizations or whatever that has the opportunities. For example, there's this organization X that has an opportunity to work with young people. They wanna maybe establish or access what is the uh, emerging trend in agricultural production in a particular country somewhere. They might go through YPAD to facilitate this interaction. So which means through YPAD, young people, young professionals can assess opportunities from these institutions. And another thing that we do is that we co-design opportunities for young people to shape food systems. For example, we co-design uh, policy interaction spaces, policy debates, we co-design um, strategies that are favorable for youth uh, interventions, youth opinion, youth approach, and, and, and uh, youth transformation and so on. So we do this with different institutions or with countries where, for example, uh, the, the agricultural, the youth in agribusiness strategy for Kenya was done together with YPAD Kenya. And so all these different uh, 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 things that relate to opportunities for young people like yourselves, or people are interested in first to shape the direction of this uh, of conversation about food. We, we get engaged in that as well. So there are different opportunities that you can get by being a member of YPAD and it's free to join. So structurally, YPAD is hosted, the secretariat is hosted in FAO. So which means that's where I work as a director. And then there are regional uh, orbs for YPAD. So the we have like three regions right now. We've got Europe, 
Africa and the Asia Pacific. The office for Europe is hosted in Prague in Czech Republic. And then the office for WIPAD Africa is hosted in Ghana by FARA, the Forum for Agricultural Research for Africa in Ghana. And the office for WIPAD Asia Pacific is hosted in Beijing in China by the Chinese Academy for Agricultural Science. So from there, we manage operations for volunteers on the ground. So, you know, we have, we cover about, we have about 72 national chapters right now that are registered, but we have members across the world as well who are not necessarily registered by registered. So now we have WIPAD Nigeria as well. There's a WIPAD Nigeria, which is functional, which is interesting. And uh, I would encourage anyone who is interested in what WIPAD does or the opportunities that WIPAD may have to get, to get in touch with the WIPAD Nigeria uh, uh, representative. So I will look for the email and share it in the text now. And so another thing is that if you, you should try as much as possible to keep in touch with our online uh, portfolio, our website where we share opportunities, whatever is going on, whatever. So any opportunities that you guys can get on board on, maybe opportunities to attend a workshop or some scholarships that is going on, all these kind of things, we share it online. And also, there are also competitions that usually uh, pass through us that we share online as well. So feel free to get involved in those, those activities. Like I said earlier, one of the best things a young person can do for themselves is to be able to identify opportunities and to go for them where they present themselves. And you know, never underestimate yourself and think, uh, oh, this thing, this particular opportunity is for some particular kind of people. You can make yourself that kind of people that the opportunity is for, you know. Check mm -hmm. through opportunities. If you, are, if, you are, if you fit into the basic eligibility, then try it out, you know. You never know. Again, always do your best in whatever you do because all these things make a difference. Build, because doing your best in whatever you do helps your confidence as well because your self-confidence is what helps you to keep going when things feels like maybe it's not particularly the best situation. And you will need a lot of self-confidence to maintain the status of success. Mm. To feel like you can do it, to feel like the next problem, you can solve it, you can move forward. That would be very, very important. Mm. And I wow. deliberately said it in the beginning. I deliberately said it in the beginning. It's good to seek for the best academic result, but mm. even if you seek for it and you don't get it, that's not the end. No oh. people who don't have the great of academic results who have gone so, so, so far. <laughs> They've gone so far that it's, in fact, it's sometimes mind boggling, mm. you know? So, and the difference there, the difference is that these are people who are very, very confident that they can go far, <laughs> you know? Mm. Number two, they don't undermine opportunities or undermine the mistakes they've made so guys, guys, I'm going, I'm going to say this again. Never join the group of people that say who oh, first class help. Don't, don't do that nonsense. And never join the group of people who say who oh, education help. You know, all these things might not lead you directly into what you want, but you can be very sure that they complement strongly to getting hmm. you to what you want. Hmm. They might make a difference whether you're going to spend two hours running around and not getting anything done or not achieving your goals versus if you're gonna spend just five minutes and achieving your goal. Education alone might make a big difference. Mm, true. Yeah, so get true. that thing first before you complain about it. Get it, put it in the bag, you know, and then get everything else. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow, so, wow. So, awesome. so go, go for it, get it all, awesome. put it all in the bag, right? Awesome. And then whenever there's a need to, to show off that you can do shit, then you put it out and say, yeah, I've done this. I don't have done this. Also, mm. this helps your confidence. Mm. This helps your individual level of confidence that if you can do this, you can do this too. Mm. And your self-confidence make a whole lot of difference in how far you're gonna go. Mm. Your self-confidence is gonna show when you're having that interview. Your self-confidence is gonna show when you're speaking to someone else who has a bag of opportunity who wants to decide if they wanna give it to you or not. Mm. Mm. So there is a whole list of reasons why you should never undermine how much, how far you're gonna go depends on you, and how much that would correlate a lot with wow. your self confidence. Wow, 
Wow, that's that's very awesome. Yeah. That's very awesome. I really there. appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate that. Before we go to the open questions, we should be yeah. taking by Ola Olua. So uh, you, you already started the last question. We're already uh, discussing it. So we just wanted to tie up the advice that you, you would have given to a younger you, all right? Mm. Which, of course, yeah. of which we are a part of at the moment. So those advice that you want to give to us, so we okay. can tie okay. them up together so we can hold it solidified. All right. So guys, in addition to what I've said before, another one interesting new turn of event in the 21st century. <laughs> is the issue of uh, digital presence and digital footprints and digital opportunities and digital failure. So all these things are real and you're gonna commit yourself to it either you want it or not. Basically, the digital age governs who you are. Either you are part of it, if either you decide to play the game or not, or the game is gonna play you. In any case, you are in the field, you are in the middle of the game. So be careful of how you are represented online. Be careful of how you represent yourself. Be careful of the conversation you have. Be careful of the post you post. Be careful of how you, how you present yourself online. If I Google Ola Lua Detula, what am I gonna see? You know, because you know, we are talking about opportunities right now. To engage with opportunities, a lot of people who hold opportunities are not gonna come to your doorstep and speak to your mommy to know how you are or who you are or learn about you they will likely check out who you are from online first. And you can bet it that a lot of the really good, nice opportunities involve people actually trying to see who you are on the digital platforms. They wanna know what kind of, how are you represented? They will make a first impression about you from that. So guys, that you have fast fingers online, be very careful, you know? Be careful of who you are, how you represent yourself. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, get that LinkedIn profile. Update that LinkedIn profile. Mm. Because these are things that you should start doing as a young person. You know, have official platforms where you populate with official information. Mm. Make sure that when someone is Googling your name in full, they are seeing real things about you, things you will want them to see. Mm. If you realize that there are things you don't want people to see that are under your name online, then clean it all up and then become mindful of how you engage with the online platforms. Mm. Mm. Because that's your, win that's your window into the world. That's your window into organizations. That's your window into opportunities. If mm. I'm going to give you a scholarship worth 40,000 uh, 40, euros, I'm definitely going to want to know who you are. And in 2020, you can be very sure they're going to Google your name. Huh. The question is, what are they going to find? So be very careful about that. Huh. And um, there was a time I was speaking to my you know, younger colleagues in, in Vancouver. Uh, these guys at UBC from Forestry Futa, Samuel and Cole and the rest of them. I was telling them about, yeah, when people say you're an ambassador, of a place of Nigeria or whatever, it is an understatement. But saying you're an ambassador has been sort of, uh, has been trivialized. People really don't attach what that means very much to it anymore. So I'm going to help you attach meaning to it so that you will know that this thing is very, very, very important. Basically, some of you will be breaking glass ceiling in terms of the opportunities you're gonna get. Or to state in another way, some people had broken glass, glass ceilings so that you can get the opportunities you're gonna get. Uh. For example, I was in Vancouver at UBC before a lot of all these new guys came in. When I was at UBC, when I came into UBC, UBC Forestry, there was no single Nigerian in the faculty, no one. And before me, I don't think there has been many either. So basically what that means, that says something. There is a perception that shape the kind of thing that are brought into UBC forestry. Mm. So now if we, this perception is going yeah. to be shifted towards positive or negative, it's going to rely primarily a lot on, who, on how I engage with that platform or how I engage at UBC. So basically if I do things well, 
some professors who had never taken a Nigerian student before are more likely to start thinking of taking a Nigerian. Mm. If I mess up with things, there are some emails from Ola Oluwa that will not get read because of what I did. They're just mm. not going to read that email. Maybe they see that email. They're just going to throw it to the bin. Mm. So the reason why I'm saying that is that whatever you guys do, always be weary of how you perceive how people perceive you and how you mm. may be shaping the lives of people you've never met. Mm. Because mm. if you assess an opportunity and you mess it all up because you think you've arrived, you mm. may be blowing the chance of many other people behind you mm. who will not know who you are, people who you will not know who they are, but you'll be affecting their life in significant ways. Mm. Mm. A, a short story. When I applied for Erasmus Mundi scholarship in 2012, 2011, someone who is an insider was later was telling me that, do you know that in the ranking for the scholarship that I got, there were about five people from a particular country in the ranking, or in the top list that were chosen. And then they realized that, wait a minute, we chose some people from this particular country last year, and then these guys ran away before they finished their program. Mm. So then they discussed that, that, okay, that's a bad idea. They just removed the O5. They removed the O5 that they've already put in the list and brought people from the uh, waiting list into the list. Hmm. So <laughs> which means some of these new guys will just really just get a letter saying, we are sorry to tell you that you are not chosen. And that's it. They will never know that some people I had had messed the whole thing up for them. Hmm. You know? So guys, mm. reflect on who you are and how you treat opportunities. Don't mm. mess it up. If you mess it up, you may be messing it up for a lot of other people that you will never know. Mm. Wow. 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 Thank you that sounds... Okay. Uh, thank you, doctor. And then I'm very sure we have a, a lot of young people online that are learning so much from this discussion. You know, I was in talk with uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, some some the, the moment we had uh, the last meeting and that young lady chatted me up and she was like, oh, I want to quit forestry. I want, I want to change to another um, uh, department. But then um, one of the testimonies we've got now from this platform, and I'm very sure we are going to get more from today's discussion is that uh, we've, we've had transformations. And thank you so much, Dr. Yemi, for sharing your stories. Okay. Please, we would love to go to the questions now. Please, uh, Meshak will take that. Meshak, please identify those who wants to ask, uh, those who want to uh, ask a question so that we can get them on board and then have it more uh, interactive. Just raise your hand if you have a question. We'd like you to voice your question out, not necessarily typing, but if you can type, that's fine. You can raise okay. your hand and I will select you. Uh, Meshak, I think we have some questions on, on the chat box. Yes, on the chat box. Please, yes, can you I have the first question. The first question. Okay, I wrote it down. The question says, um, what are the directives of sustainable use of wood in relation to urban forestry? What what are the what are that is that is that is in urban forestry now? We are saying yeah. this should there should okay. Urban forestry protect the trees in the urban and everything. Uh -huh. Was not talking about sustainable use. How does it correlate with urban oh, okay. forestry? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I get your point. Well, um, there are a lot of there are a lot of relationship between how you use wood, your choice of wood, uh, in terms of its engineering, its design process, or whatever, and the and sustainable, you know, uh, urban forestry. So increasingly in the West, I think there's a, 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 a huge move towards better uh, urban design, urban greening. And from that aspect, making sure there are more representation of trees in urban spaces has been is increasingly being promoted. And also part of that is also the use of wood as a design product, as a con for construction product, because as you all know, wood product can house is one of the Using wood 
in angel as a as a structural engineering or design product for houses or whatever is part of the process of keeping carbon in a particular state over a long period of time. So so you do so you using urban urban uh, urban design, urban spaces and, and houses and whatever, using wood to construct and so on is a good way to contribute to greening of the urban spaces. Wow. So which means in terms of design is prettier as well. Wood structure in urban spaces when properly designed is pretty. Secondly, it's also technically supported. There are some technical findings that have shown that you can use wood in urban design and in urban spaces in a, in a very mechanically uh, supported way. Basically it's strong, it can, can support, it can reinforce a lot of structures. And the third thing is that it's also carbon friendly. You know, it's, 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 it's a simple way to, 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 sink, to, to sink carbon in a particular state over a period of time. All right. It's well, that's awesome. So, banned forestry. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, someone is asking a question here. I say, okay, that's the person of um, Jumoke. You saying, what advice do you have for a graduate student, a graduate student now, who missed out on opportunity to participate in student platforms? He was not part of any NGO, or any organization. He just went to school, studied, and got a good grade. Hmm. What should All the right. person do now? Okay, you can do a, a number of things. One, it depends on what you, okay, separate things. One, I'm assuming if you graduated with say a top grade, like say first class and so on, continue to seek for opportunities. Start seeking for opportunities, explore programs, uh, explore scholarship opportunities and so on. Secondly thing you can do is there are platforms for volunteering. That does not restrict you from, there's no restriction of that you have to be a bachelor's degree student or not. For example, mm -hmm. YPAD is one of them. YPAD is not a student association. IFSA is a student association. IAAS is a student association. YPAD goes beyond you being a student. YPAD goes into young people who are working already. As far as you are under 40 years old, you can be a mm -hmm. part of YPAD and it's free as well. So you can just go online and enter your, you know, enter your bio data and you're a member of YPAD. So, you know, try out different kind of opportunities that like that, where you can still be part of a community and you can learn all those things you might have been missing in the past. For example, leadership opportunities, communication, community development and support. So these different things that you can do to show in your profile that you are a contributing member of the society. And that opportunities can be conferred on you with someone with some proud understanding of how to adapt such opportunity towards your own goal. Mm, wow, that's awesome. That's okay. awesome. So, so in short, the, the person can still catch up if the person exactly. is ready. You can still uh, play catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um Olumo okay. me. can we hear you? Olumo Yadragbimi. Olumo are you there? Okay, if you're not there, can I have um, Ishmael Moiwo? Yes. Hello, are you, are you getting yeah. me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to use this opportunity. I'm Ishmael Shumaila Moiwo from Jala University, Sierra Leone to be specific. All right. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank Doc for his presentation, and I've learned a lot. Now, my question is that he mentioned about the youth and the digital age. Mm -hmm that youth have to make use of every opportunity they have in life. And in as much that youth are to make use of these opportunities. Now he made mention of the white pad. How can youth in Sierra Leone specifically will be part of this white pad um, innovation to boosting up either the economic of the country and the nation at large? That is the first question I have. Second, is that as a wood scientist, what are the mechanisms that are put in place or that will be put in place to ensure that the timber grading system in a specific country match with the international standard, however, without omitting the local or national standards in the state? All right. Okay, I'll, I'll go into the first uh, question. So, um, 
There are different national chapters for WIPAD, and of course, there's a WIPAD city alone as well. I will check up, I will connect you with the uh, African coordinator. Please send me an email after so that I can connect you to the coordinator for Africa for WIPAD, and then they can put you in touch with the uh, community that we have in Syria alone. So, what needs to be done is that, you know, through, because, okay, there is power in congregation. There are some sure. things that you may not be able to achieve as an individual. For example, you may really not be able to go to a state office in Sierra Leone and say, you know, uh, young people want this thing as an individual. But if you go as part of a network and say, oh, we are white part Sierra Leone, a group of young farmers in, in Sierra Leone, and we think this X, Y, and Z, that may work. The reason is because white part is highly popular in a lot of uh, state level politics and so on, and agricultural political discussion. So we are known for influencing the direction of agricultural development among young people. So you can leverage being a part of white part community, like white part city alone, for national level discussion and national level goals. So that will happen if you, if you guys become, you know, a sort of part of the group and an entity and you make an approach or you make a demand as a community in white part city alone. So concerning your second question, your second question is a bit more of a robust thesis, and I'll just give you a bit of. Just <laughs> of <laughs> I'll just give you a bit of some, you know, some insight to it. So you know, there is a there is a global, uh, you know, there is a complexity around forest certification. Forest certification in itself has, uh, you know, social dimensions, economic dimensions, and politics, which is highly uh, contested. Contested. You know, economically, there are favorable elements towards communities because when, when forest certification becomes a thing, then, you know, forest management is also enhanced and there is potential is more theoretically, more potential for low, uh, sustainable livelihood or community livelihood uh, uh, um, from, uh, output as a potential, basically. And, uh, but then the issue here that makes finding an answer to your question highly complex is because of the political dimension of forest certification. There's a politics of really connected to illegal logging and the fact that there are industries, there are industrial illegal logging uh, 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 industries who are highly powerful and they are shaping the politics of forest management in Syria alone, as it is in many other countries around the world. So if these people continue to have the power they have, or the particular state level politics of Sierra Leone in itself, enable these industrial loggers to still continue to shape the direction of policies that relates to forest certification in the country or wood certification, then no matter what kind of uh, uh, political narrative or statement that the government put forward, this particular narrative was still subjugate to the, to the powerful industrial loggers. So there's, and also because of, because there are powerful industrial loggers, there are opportunities for them to circumvent all these rules and still continue to perpetuate the problem that is leading to illegal logging and illegal wood uh, uh, excavation in the country. So there's a whole, so there's a whole system right there that will enable or strengthen good legal, legality in the country or limit the kind of options that are available for legal wood, produ uh, wood production and, and use. So wow. there's a lot to talk about here. So, uh, but, but I think, I hope that kind of helps a little bit. But it's, it's a complex That's system great. and I understand. That's great. That's great. Because of our time. Benga Lawrence. Yeah, Benga Lawrence, yes, Benga Lawrence. I think that, that should be the last question we take because our time is almost yeah. Almost and oh, after the gatherings, we'll be taking a short presentation from Alex on the yeah. IFSA, uh, IFSA UFRO project. Can okay, we have thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Are you, are you with me? Am I on now? Yes, yes, you are on, you are on. Oh, okay, thank you very much. I really want to appreciate you for that insightful lecture that you just delivered. So my question is basically on uh, seeking scholarship uh, opportunities, most especially abroad. What I've noticed even um, in school is just that um, scholarship opportunities mostly abroad is majorly for 
those people that are more motivated as those for flash things. And I've noticed that over time. And those two ones, um, okay, second class, upper, they are sometimes motivated to do that, but mostly they don't get it. So I want you to advise probably most of our two ones to what can we actually do when we have two one outside the school that we can complete favorably with those okay. of the first school scandal. Okay. Thank you so much, Brenda. That's a very, very, very good question. Because one thing that two one does to you is put you in a, in a state of limbo. In the sense that you are wondering, am I really qualified? Yeah, I have a very good result, but I'm not really so sure because you know I'm competing with first class students. But you know what I've noticed? Usually, scholarship applications are treated, each applicant's profile is treated as a bundle. First class, yes, strengthens your application, but there are also some potential for you to still have a gap in your profile as a first class student. A 2-1 has a whole bundle of application as well. So there are tendencies for a 2-1 to actually get some scholarship that a first class may not get. And the reason is going to be because of the bundle, the, the application bundle that the person submits. For example, the CV, the statement of research interest or, or motivation letter or cover letter, whatever it's called. Uh, so what is in your CV is going to make a whole lot of difference. Mm. And mm. or because, you know, there are some CVs, I've seen some CV that the way people articulate what is in the CV is clean, is nice, enticing. And then they wrote a very good cover letter. So if this person has a 2-1 and a very, very well-established extracurriculum activity, for example, a president of a very relevant club, they've been to, say, an international event for, you know, it's for students before, they've won some competitions before, they volunteered for different programs in the community before. You know, your CV looks completely different than someone who says, I have a first class, and that's it. Mm. So you may, you may outperform with a 2 1. You can have, you have the tendency to outperform a first class student for sure. Mm. And interestingly, in the international community, especially for jobs, actually, I, I, I've realized that your grade does not matter for jobs in the international community. All your grade matters in a very, it's not significant. The, the, the extent to which your grade matters is very, very not significant at all. <laughs> so there's a whole lot of other things that matters. Your, your networking opportunity, your ability to write, your communication is really, really important here. Your ability to communicate socially, nicely, your ability to capture the essence your ability to read the mind of someone who is going to evaluate your, your package. Your ability to speak to what they are looking for. So there's a whole lot of all these things that, that will matter, that may change the whole ball game for you. So I would say, if you have a 2-1, know that you are competing with first class, that will help you. <laughs> then second thing is then, seek for every other areas that will bounce up your profile volunteer a lot more be aggressive in how you volunteer volunteer for different things learn about different things attend conferences if you can if you can have a publication do it if you can and that's one thing also about wipad wipad we have a platform where young people write blogs about their engagement so which means blogging writing blogs and short stories about your engagement about your career and whatever all these things make a difference because your cv looks differently if you can show that you've been able to pass uh, your, 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 your uh, you've been able to communicate some achievements, you're a good communicator, you've produced some outcome, some output for other people to read, that will make a difference as well. Because you can look at it this way. There are also some first class students that never got any scholarship. They keep trying and they keep failing. There's a reason why. And there are others who have two one and they've already gotten scholarships ahead of someone with the first class. There's a reason why. Wow. Oh, okay. That's awesome. um, okay. Thank you, Doctor, for that uh, insightful uh, word. Okay. Um, very quickly, I want you to stress more on volunteering before we move, before I hand over the next session to Meshak. Uh, you know, some people see volunteering as a waste of time, you know? And mm -hmm. why some people take it more serious? How does, uh, can, can you help us uh, 
uh, share more light on, on on how volunteering can help our applications and uh, on the international platforms too. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, if you see my profile, you realize that I volunteered a lot for for IFSA. Uh, along my academic career, as I was progressing academically, I was also making sure that I kept volunteering for you know, student platforms. And with that volunteering, I was having the opportunity to engage with different international stage. I was attending conferences. I was representing students in different platforms. I was engaging in debates, in policy discussion, and so on. So which means volunteering is a window into other opportunities, not just volunteering for volunteering sake. Not just volunteering to have your name as a volunteer, but they're using that window to climb a step higher, to deliver some, some, some tangible, tangible uh, uh, things. So for example, now I will speak to people like who are already out of the country. It's not over. You were competing before with Nigerians. Now you are gonna be competing with international people like yourself. So don't think you've arrived. <laughs> so your, 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 your quest to be better your quest to make your profile stronger is as important as that as it has ever been. So which means you really never dare complete until you're there. So keep searching, keep expanding your, your portfolio, keep getting better. And recently there was a GLF born 2020. There were a lot of young people that volunteered for that. Yeah. And, you know, people volunteer, you become more visible, international organizations sees you, some of them like what you say, some of them retweet what you say, you never know who is reading. Mm. So put yourself out there and put yourself out there in the right way, in the right form. When you see that people are engaging in something that helps them career-wise, discuss with them. Don't be too proud to share your, your, um, to you share your plight. Me. You know, to share your achievements and your plight as well, to learn from others, to connect with people who are doing something that you would like to do and learn from them and do the same. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's okay. awesome. Wow. That's awesome. amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. We want to quickly do something shortly. All right. I'm going to be sharing my screen to do this quickly. All right. So yeah. we like to. Uh, present an award for you. All right. Uh, uh, so that is that is the award of red bands. Please, can we all appreciate uh, uh, Dr. Feel free to unmute and appreciate him. Feel free to unmute and appreciate him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Adi. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. All right, thank you very much. So, can we, can we mute our laptops back now? Okay. The the certificate, the certificate, um, the award, the award will be shared to everyone. Please, we want you to go on your social media platform, tweet Thank you. it, add it on Facebook. Let's appreciate him all around. Tag Wipad, tag Mesha Karele, tag Adetulalua, tag as much as everybody. That we have. Tag Tag game, you know, you know, all around, all around. Mm. So that is that is what we'd like you to do. So I've shared the certificate to you on the chat on the chat box, so we can we can we can um all right, I take advantage of that. And you are going to receive it in your emails too as an appreciation for this time. Okay. So before we all go, right. we are going to have we we acknowledge Isa. Isa has been a good support to this program. Isa at international level, they have big support in this program. They are one of our proud sponsors for this program. They make this platform available for our use as long as we want to use it during this session. And we, we believe their partnership is going to continue with us. So we are going to be calling on uh, Alex or not to the one, the biggest man that we know in this side in Nigeria at the moment. Okay, Alex, can we have you? Alex? Yes, Alex, I'm with you. All right. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay.
I will share my screen now. Okay, Alex, are you able to share your screen or can I do that from my end here? Yeah? Let, me, let me do that from here. Okay. Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, sharing screen now, right there. Uh, share screen. Uh, okay, this. Okay. Uh, I guess I will be able to see the PowerPoint. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We can see it. We can see it. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex Mantiji, and I'm going to be talking about the Young uh, African Policy Professional Communications Project. Yes, uh, the aim of this project is to change the narrative for forestry profession in Africa. Uh, what we discover is that uh, most African students do not believe in the future of forestry as an education. And for my next slide, according to Samuel Ayala, he was of the opinion that forestry is not very glamorous in some African countries, including Nigeria. And getting to a developed country that values environmental sustainability like Canada has changed its overall perspective about the forestry sector. Yes, it is a well respected field. And, but can we change its title in Africa? Yes, we can. And that is what we are trying to make an attempt to do. Yes, um, Africa is the world's youngest continent, and about 60% of our population, as of 2019, is under 25 years old. There is a need to raise awareness on the career opportunities that forestry education could offer young people and to counter the existing negative perceptions. Oh, please, can you hear me from your end? We can, we can. Go on. Go okay, on. fine. Yes, this, uh, this is a novel research approach. It is an African solution to Africa problem, and it is for students and by students. Uh, what we're going to be doing is just basically three things. You are going to be sharing success stories of young African forestry professionals, something like which this platform I've been doing now for about two months. The last time we were able to speak to um, Okay, today we're speaking to Yemi Adeye from Nigeria. Fortunately, uh, where me and Yemi connected with us is I also studied wood and paper technology from Federal College of Forestry in Nevada. And that was between 2011 and 2013. So, and also we're going to be sharing some institutions, open forestry program in Africa, then networking organizations. Yemi talked more about volunteering, IFSA, WIFA, and all the rest. Yes, there are quite a number of organizations that um, young forestry professionals will join and add them in their career. We're going to be showcasing these things in our study. For the update, we have newly recruited two researchers, Okoyemi Adeyemi, who is a PhD student from South Africa, then Skovia Akelu from Uganda. They'll be joining in the research work. Also, for our final product, the hard copies of the book will be distributed to tertiary institutions offering forestry programs in Africa and selected high schools. Then the electronic copies will also be widely distributed online and through various social media platforms. Yes, this project is being supported by the IFO Special Programs for Development of Capacities and the Joint IFO Tax Force on Forest Education and the International Forestry Student Association. You can find more on ifsa.net slash ifsa IFO Africa book project and um, yes at this point i need to acknowledge that uh, we'll be needing your help soon um we'll be launching our service we're going to be collecting this data through service we want you guys even as students to submit your success stories yes we understand that many students may say yes i'm happy with what i'm studying or something but there are some people who are succeeding some are getting a different kind of opportunities in this forestry sector as students. Then as young professionals, we want to hear your story and would like your story to inspire the next generation of forest stars from Africa. And we believe we can all do this together. And that is why we're on this platform today, that um, we want your story. That is just the simple thing. We want your story, then if you um, broadcast it and share it and let it inspire others. Wow. And awesome. that's is um, for our project coordinator, Julian Ashenk Ua from um, 
is from she's from Kenya and currently based in Germany. I also be conducting the research on behalf of DTF with two other researchers. Uh, we have an international team of experts. Uh, let me quickly acknowledge them. Dr. Fola Babalala from Nigeria, Dr. Sandra Rodriguez from Mexico, and Dr. Michael Rekola from Finland. We have Mariana Bolare from Serbia. We have Simon from Italy. We have a zillion from India. So we are trying to make the work as holistic as possible. This is a student uh, solution to a student uh, problem. And the, we want to especially thank the SPDC, IFA SPDC. They have agreed to print some copies of the book for us, which we hope that every university, every school offering forestry or related program in Africa can receive at least a copy in the whole of the 52 countries in Africa. So that is what we want to do. Um, before I end this slide, I would like to talk to YPA director, and um, Dr. Yemi will also be needing your assistance. I'll get in touch with you later about this. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank All you for right. joining this call. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yes. All right, Hola, Lua. over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Alex, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you for letting us know um, on the things you are currently doing. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, we are moving to Meshak to say one or two things before we. All right. Um, we end this program. I would love to appreciate everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. We are glad the past few editions, they've been great. And then I'm very glad that you all are online now. And then, you know, getting one or two things from uh, our great personality here, Dr. Yemi. Okay, our next event would be on scholarship applications. And then we really want you to know that the as far as, for, as, far as scholarship is concerned, or as far as scholarships are concerned, it is real. They are not vague. <laughs> I think you understand. Like uh, Dr. Yemi told you, he, he, he was a beneficiary and then he, he really said much on that. And in our next meeting, uh, next month, that will be, uh, I think the first week of next month. So we'll be discussing uh, scholarship. So how you can um, give a very good application some of those things you need on your CV, some of those things you need on your motivation letters and, and the likes. So please, we want you to stick with us. And then when we make the call, like you've always uh, done, please, we want you to as well join us in our next edition of uh, Zoom live chat as we'll be discussing scholarships, application, and some other things too. Please anticipate. Over to Meshak. All right, awesome. As we close the session um, for today, okay, we want to appreciate everyone once again. Our team, Jimmy, Azan, Azan and um, Samuel, we appreciate you. All right, um, for this program, we want to do more, we want to go far. Uh, we have, one of our goal is to ensure that we use this platform like we started in the last time to share um, um, some little scholarship support, all right? Probably money funds that can help forestry students to get data data plans or data subscription to access online courses, to access online materials, you know, to be able to pay for and buy online courses, to be able to do um, basic things that they have to do. We, we want um, to support, we want to give out funds to people like we did the last, um, the last program we shared a hundred thousand to over 15 people, a hundred thousand to over 15 people in the last edition of the program. And um, we want to do more, we want to do more, we want to reach out. By the end of the year, we want to ensure that at least 500 forestry students have a benefit of this program that comes up once every month. The, another one will be coming August, then we have September, October, like that. But before the end of the year, we want to ensure that we've been able to support 500 forestry students. And yeah. I know that's possible. So if you have partners that you can talk to for us or people that you can, you know, if you want to partner with us or you have people who can be of support to us, we'd like to have them. Just um, send an email 
to the email you've been receiving um, from Adetula Olaoluwa or myself personally, or our general email, which is mass relevance, um, which we we'll use to send an appreciation email to you. You can use that. So thank you very much, Dr. Yemi. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks so, so much for inviting me. And uh, yes, it's sir. nice to see all your faces again. If anyone has question, if anyone has questions for me, if I could answer your question, I try as much as possible to answer people on LinkedIn or Twitter. So just you know, send me a, a direct message. I will try to answer as much as I can. I may not be able to answer quickly enough, but send me a reminder. Feel free. Ask me whatever you need to ask me. I will try as much as I can. All right. Thank you very much. We can, All right, we can leave now. God bless you. We we'll share the grace in Jesus' name. And <laughs> thank, thank you, you, Dr. Amy. Thank you, right, Dr. guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. You can hold we'll your video. You. you can hold your video now. Anybody? Yeah, can please thank you for that video. Feel free. You can unmute. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Feel free. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Right. Thank you, Dr. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. 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 This is great. <laughs> Mr. Alex, do I care? Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate. Uh, what the session all over again on YouTube? The session is already on YouTube. You can watch. Mr. Say, are you online, sir? No, you, yeah, you can watch the session all over again. Oh, it's mine. Thank you so much. After this event, you'll be sharing the link, the link to the video to everyone so that yeah. you can share with friends too. So after after now, we'll be getting across to you the, 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 link, the video link so that you can share with friends and watch over again. Thank you for joining us. We are grateful. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Shemuri Tala, Naima Tala, BC, Infinite Note 4, Mohamed K, Alex Onoti, Joke, Ade Oli Fiolua, Utman, Womiloju, Bora, Princess Oro. I think one of, a professor joined us. Where were, where were, where were? Yeah. Where? Yes, Professor Nobat is from my Hi, Fisola. Wow, wow, we appreciate everyone. Thank you, Prof. Everyone. Thank you, Prof. All right, guys. We appreciate you. So you can leave if we want to leave, or you can continue uh, just with us. <laughs> I think we, we are live, so let's end this session. Let me end the live uh, the live stream. I'm stopping the